When it comes to the Mustang hobby, a lot of people never think of their Mustang as an investment. If you're buying it to enjoy it and modify it, it's a bad investment because the money you put in for mods, you might get some of it back, but you're never going to get all that money back. But there are a lot of Mustangs that are good investments. Now, some of them are just not affordable anymore. I mean, your bosses, your Shelbys, even the modern Mustangs like the Celines, the 93 Cobras, those cars have gone up so far in price that they're just hard to justify as a good investment. But in my opinion, there's actually a couple out there that are still valuable and still gonna go up in value. So here's my top five Mustangs that I feel are a good investment. Number five on my list is gonna be the 1990 through 1993 limited edition Mustang convertibles. And there's four cars that fall under this group. The first one was the 1990. These were deep emerald green convertibles with white interior. They're available either a five speed or an automatic, and they came with a GT turbine wheels. Now these cars, as many of you know, were originally designed for a giveaway with 7UP, so they're known as the 7UP cars. In 1992, Ford once again offered a limited edition LX convertible with the feature car or summer edition car. For 1992, it was available in vibrant red with a white interior, the luggage rack was replaced by a rear spoiler, and it also had white wheels. These again were also available in a 5-speed or automatic. For 1993, you had two options, either canary yellow or vibrant white. Now the white would be the triple white Fox, it usually had the white interior, white paint, white wheels, while the yellow car was the only factory Mustang ever to come with chrome ponies, and again, both cars got rid of the luggage rack for a rear spoiler and were unique in their own way. Now as far as these cars go, there was not a ton of them made. In 1990, the 7 Up convertible, there's a little over 4,000 of these cars out there. For 1992, there was around 2,200, and for 1993, there was just over 3,000 for both of them. Now, although a lot of people aren't fans of the Fox Body Convertible, we know some of the shortcomings. These are great looking cruisers that are sure to go up in value over time. Number four on my list is going to be the 1979 Mustang Indy 500 pace car. Now, 1979 was the first time the Fox chassis found its way underneath a Mustang. Now, a lot of Fox Body Mustangs are becoming very, very collectible right now. Your 93 Cobras, your Celine Mustangs, your SSPs, even regular coupes are commanding big dollars. The days of picking up a nice running Fox Body for a couple grand pretty much seem to be gone. The pace car, in my opinion, though, is still very undervalued. They made around 10,000 of these cars, about half with a 5 liter engine and half with a turbo 2.3 liter. Now, 10,000 is a lot, but that was 40 years ago. So, how many of these cars are really left on the road? I'm sure by now a lot of them have been damaged, rotted out, destroyed, whatever. So, there's probably not a lot of nice examples left, which means the pace car should definitely go up in value. And this was the second time the Mustang was used as a pace car, and all the pace cars are definitely going to be collectible, but I do feel the 79 is very undervalued right now. If you look around a little bit, you can find a nice driver quality car for four or $5,000, and even a pretty decent, almost show quality one for a little over $10,000. Compared to the prices of some other desirable Fox bodies, to me, the pace car is still a great deal. Number three on my list is the 2007 through 2009 GT500. Now the GT500s, that year is being overshadowed by the modern GT500s because every time Ford brings a new one out, they make more and more horsepower and are more and more impressive. But the 07 to 09 I think is very undervalued and let me tell you why. When that car came out in 2007, it was a huge deal for Ford. At 500 horsepower from the 5.4 liter supercharged engine, it was the most powerful Mustang ever made. It was originally supposed to be an SVT Cobra, but Ford made a deal with Shelby to bring back that iconic GT500 name for the first time in almost 40 years. So that was a big deal for Ford and big deal for enthusiasts as well. Those cars sold well, they're not exactly rare, but you can find these cars in really, really nice shape for less than 25 grand. And if you don't mind some miles, almost as low as 20 grand. Again, you're getting 500 horsepower, the Tremec 6060 six-speed transmission, and the iconic Shelby name. And definitely over time, I feel the value of those cars is definitely going to go up. Number two on my list is going to be the 2003 through 2004 Mustang Cobra. Now, I know these cars can still be expensive, but in my opinion, they're still a good value and the prices of these cars are going to go up. When the 2003 Cobra arrived on the scene, it was a game changer from Ford. Most powerful Mustang ever made, definitely the best Cobra ever made. I mean, 390 horsepower with a supercharged 4.6, and many feel those engines were underrated. I then with a T56 six-speed, independent rear suspension, a great looking car, and the car became an instant classic. Now there's almost 24,000 cars sold in the two years, so they're not exactly rare, but finding a really clean car is getting harder and harder because a lot of these cars were driven hard, heavily modified, raced. You now these cars have seen a lot, and because of the power they make, they're great, great street cars. Now again, you can find some deals out there. Some of the rare colors like your Comp Orange, your Mr. Chrome are gonna bring big bucks, 
but convertibles and some of the regular cars with some decent miles can still be found in the high teens, making it a great performance car for the money and definitely a car that I feel is gonna go up in value. Number one on my list, the 1994 through 1995 Mustang Cobra. Now hear me out here, the 93 Cobras have skyrocketed. I mean, cars that need full restoration are selling for the low to mid teens. Good quality drivers are in the 20s. And if you want a low mileage example, especially like a teal one, 40 to 50 grand is what these cars are selling for. The 94 to 5 is a bargain by comparison. It has basically the same engine except for the intake with some basic packaging differences, but you have better brakes. You have five lug, bigger interior. Whether you like the SN95 body better or not, I mean, that's up for discussion. But to me, it's a much nicer looking overall car and they're just an absolute great value. They made 11,000 total between 94 and 95. Now, most of these were hard tops, but both years you could get a convertible. In 1994, it was again a pace car and they were available in Rio Red and they made right around 1,000 of them. 1995, you could also get a convertible, but only in black and they all had tan interior. They had 500 that they made with a normal soft top and 499 that they made with a removable hardtop, making that also an extremely rare car. Even the Cobra R is still very affordable for 1995. You know, the 93s are selling for six figures right now. You can find a nice Cobra R from 95 for in the 30 range right now, making all the 94 to 95 Cobras really, in my opinion, an excellent value for the dollar and a car over time that's definitely gonna go up. Like I said, the cars I mentioned are ones that I feel are good Mustangs that you can purchase at a reasonable price, have a lot of fun with, and probably not lose any money, and possibly, if you keep it long enough, even make a couple bucks off of it. Now, I know there's plenty of other good deals out there. I'm sure you guys have your own opinions, and let us know in the comments below.